I'm pleased today to come to the floor of the Senate to talk about the Patriot Act. I'm pleased that we have cracked open the door, that we will shed some light on the Patriot Act. I wish the door were wider open, the debate broader and more significant, but we will talk a little bit about the constitutionality today of the Patriot Act. Jefferson said that if we had a government of angels, we wouldn't have to care or be concerned about the power that we give to government. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't have angels in charge of our government. There have been times even in our history when government has invaded your household to take things from you. In the 1930s, government came into your household and said, give us your gold. Gold was confiscated in this country in 1933. Could there conceivably be a time when government comes into your house and says, we want your guns? Well, people say that's absurd. That would never happen. I hope that day never comes. I'm not accusing anybody of being in favor of that, but I am worried about a government that is sifting through millions of records without asking, are you a suspect? Without asking, are you in league with foreign terrorists? Are you plotting violent overthrow of your government? One of the provisions of the Patriot Act is called the library provision. They can look at the books you check out in the library. Well, people say, well, still a judge has to sign these warrants, but we changed the standard. The standard of the Fourth Amendment was probable cause. They had to argue or at least convince a judge that you were a suspect, that you were doing something wrong. Now the cause or the standard has been changed to relevance. So I don't know if I've been investigated. My visa bills sometimes have been $5,000. Sometimes we pay for them over the phone, which is a wire transfer. Have I been investigated by my government? I don't know, it's secret. What I want are protection. Just because we believe in procedural protections, just because we believe in the Constitution, doesn't mean that we don't wanna capture terrorists, but we just wanna have some rules. I'll give you an analogy. Right now, you've been to the airport. Most of America has been through the airport at some point in time in the last year or two. Millions of people fly every day. But we're taking this shotgun approach. We think everyone's a terrorist. These are important constitutional questions. But when the Patriot Act came up, we were so frightened by 9-11 that it just flew through here. There weren't enough copies to be read. There was one copy at the time. No senator read the Patriot Act. It didn't go through the standard procedure. And look at what's happening now. The thing is with the Patriot Act is that it's so emotional because anyone who stands up like myself and says we need to have protections for our people, that we shouldn't sift through every gun owner in America through their records, looking and just trolling through records. Interestingly, we have looked at 28 million electronic records when the inspector general looked at this. 28 million electronic records. We've looked at 1,600,000 texts. Now, if you said to me, well, they ask a judge and they thought these he were terrorists, I don't have a problem. Judge gives them a warrant and they look at these text messages or electronic records. But do you want them trolling through your Facebook? Do you want them trolling through your emails? Do you want a government that is unrestrained by law? We can fight, we can preserve our freedoms. We are who we are because of our freedoms and our individual liberty. If we give that up, we're no different than those who we oppose. Those who wish to destroy our country wanna see us dissolve from within. We dissolve from within when we give up our liberties. But I guess most of my message is that we shouldn't be fearful. We shouldn't be fearful of freedom. We shouldn't be fearful of individual liberty. And they're not mutually exclusive. You don't have to give up your liberty to catch criminals. You can catch criminals and terrorists and protect your liberty at the same time. There is a balancing act, but what we did in our hysteria after 9-11 was we didn't do any kind of balancing act. We just said, come and get it. Here's our freedom, come and get it. I think we all want security. Nobody wants what happened on 9-11 to happen again. But I think we, we don't need to simplify the debate to such an extent that we simply say we have to give up our liberties. For example, I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me in Washington, other elected officials, and they say, we could have gotten Massawi, the 19th hijacker, if we'd had the Patriot Act. 
The truth of the matter is that we didn't capture Massawi because we had poor police work. And ask yourself, did we fire anybody after 9-11? We gave people gold medals. We gave them medals of honor for their intelligent work after 9-11. To my knowledge, not one person was fired. What did we do? We passed the Patriot Act and said, come and take our liberties, make us safe. But to make us safe, we shouldn't give up our rights to protect what we read, to protect what we view, to protect where we go and who we associate. We shouldn't allow government to troll willy-nilly through millions of records. So I would ask in conclusion that as these amendments come forward, that people think about it, think about our constitutional protections, but don't go out and say that you know, the senator from Kentucky doesn't want to capture terrorists, or that the senator of Kentucky wants people to have guns and to attack us. Because the thing is, is we can have reasonable philosophic debates about this, but we need to be having an open debate process. We need to talk about the constitutional protections, the protections that protect us all, and we need to be aware of that.